I'm back. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, shopping around for a surgeon and understanding the, the procedures that they do. Um, there are there, there's a lot of procedures out there that they can do to reduce the size of your breast. Um, one is on one actually is a scarless method. Um, if say for instance if you're really not that big and you kind of want to reduce, uh, they can go in and kind of liposuck um, some of the fat out and then you're kind of reduced that way. But it kind of reduces volume as well, so your your boobies are flatter. But for most people they're going to go through the uh, the whole T-scar um, where they go around your nipple uh, straight down and then uh, kind of like a smiley up under your breast and then you take all that um, all of the excess um, out from there and then they close it back up and push your nipple back up and so through and th the way the way that's done is um, they don't uh, remove your nipple they don't detach anything they just kind of like keep uh, it's called the pedicle that is your nipple and all the the nerves and stuff and the blood supply that's called the pedicle they keep that intact and what they'll do is they'll pull it just a little bit away from your uh, muscle your chest muscle and then they'll push it back up but it's never detached they just pull it away a little bit it's never detached and then they uh, they take all of the excess tissue from the bottom and then pull the two skin flaps closed stitch it up and pull your nipple through then sew it around okay um, that is one way and that is the traditional way there's also a way where they kind of do like a keyhole where you don't have the smiley line at the bottom it's more like a nipple and then the keyhole at the bottom they take out tissue and then they pull it closed and so you don't have the smile line but when you are bigger like I am most likely they're gonna have to go around your nipple down and then the smiley line so I, I call that the T cut because it's kind of like a upside down T um and so uh, there's also one more procedure uh, where in a very very like large large cases um, and uh, that where they can't really safely uh, uh, pr uh, keep the pedicle intact that which is the nipple they can't keep the pedicle intact they have to actually remove the nipple reduce the blood uh, the the breast tissue and then close it up and sew the nipple back on and then when they do this this is the difference between having the pedicle in, uh, um, um, intact and having the pedicle um, detached uh, when it's detached and your uh, your nipple is taken off and put back put back on, which is called a uh, um, a free graft a free graft free graft nipple. Okay, um, what that means is you will not be able to breastfeed if you have children. And you want to have want to breastfeed. You cannot do that because all of the uh, the nerves and everything is detached. Um, you will not have sensation. Uh, in the nipple because all of that has been detached. Um, often you will lose uh, pigmentation and may have to get it tattooed back in. Um, another thing is the nipple will not have a protrude, protrusion on it so sometimes it turns out flat and so what they have to do is put skin flaps to make it protrude again or either they'll uh, and a little cartilage to make it protrude again and that is a big issue for a lot of women even though it's something so small as a, a protrusion and you, you you know your nipple never really protrudes out that that much you know unless you just have really big ones but they usually don't protrude out that much and so um you know with a nipple that doesn't that does not get erect or 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 um and it just stays flat all the time. That's a big deal for women, some women. That was a big deal for me. And so I wanted to avoid the free uh, free nipple graft, I mean free graft nipple um, at all costs. And so um, one doctor I went to, he he was uh, he was all the way with the, the nipple graft. All the way. And he it he kind of put it to me like there was no other option 
And so I felt like, you know, there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way. I really, it's very difficult for me to let go of, you know, being able to look at myself in the mirror and saying, I look fine. You know, um, it's very hard for me to let go. I could, I could deal with the scarring. I could deal with the pain of recovery. I could deal with not being able to breastfeed. I could deal with, um, you know, loss of sensation. I could deal with all those things, but I could not deal with looking at myself and seeing something that was completely unnatural for me. And to me, a, a free nipple graft does not look natural. Um, uh, matter of fact, I'll see if I can find like a picture, you know, of, of the free nipple graft, just so you kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Um, so anyway, um, I actually shopped around and looked for another surgeon and it was just because I just wanted a second opinion. Not that, not saying that this doctor was incorrect about his decision. What I wanted to see if, is there a better way. And so by shopping around, I found that there was a better way. And basically that better way was to not go as small as, as say, say for instance, a C cup. With me being almost just about a J now, you know, it would be kind of like I'm ridiculous to go to a C cup, you know. Um, and then... Uh, at that point, I would have to have something like a, uh, a nipple graft. But if I went to say something more like a full D, you know, it's not so much, it is a big difference, but it's not so much like uh, you would have to detach everything just to put everything back. And so uh, I actually found a surgeon who uh, would work with me on that, on because because it's almost like a collaboration. You have to let your surgeon know all of your concerns and then they let you know what's safe and then you go from there. Okay? So um, that that I, that was just my spiel on uh, the importance of shopping around. Um, the importance of doing your own research as well. Because say for instance, I hadn't, if I hadn't gone out there and researched and looked at images and seen what, uh, what each procedure looked like once it was uh, healed and done, I wouldn't have any idea that when they detach my nipples, it would, what it would look like or um, I would really wouldn't have known about um, like the sensation being gone or anything like that. So it's, it's a lot of times surgeons, some surgeons won't tell you these details. And it's not because they're trying to omit something, but some they're human too. Sometimes they forget to tell you things. So um, make sure you do your own research. Make sure you shop around for doctors, okay? It's okay for you to get a second opinion. Um, you know, you don't have to stick with one doctor. Um, you don't. You don't. You have the freedom of choice. And that's just a little important message uh, because, um, you know, had I not, had I not gone through and did my research and shopped around, you know, I may have ended up with something I was completely unhappy with. And uh, even though I, I haven't gotten the, the surgery yet, I am comfortable with what the doctor has decided to do for me. And that is the most important part. You want to be comfortable before you go into surgery. So uh, remember, shop around. Um, thanks for listening, you guys. I'll see you later.